Hello everybody, welcome to my channel and welcome to my series on my approach to scrapbooking. I'm hoping to share with you how I approach scrapbooking from the moment I snap a photo until a layout is done and put away in an album. Now I'm not here to tell you how to scrapbook, I'm here to tell you how I scrapbook and perhaps some of these tips and tricks along the way will help you refine your process. So let's go ahead and get started. So in this episode, I'm going to start with my photo taking process. I have an Android phone and that is my main camera since it's with me all the time. That's generally what I use to take pictures. So I'm just going to take a picture of my living room floor here and you'll see why as we go through this process and stick around to the end of the video because I will share tips with you on on things to keep in mind through your process. So I have a backup program on my phone called Dropbox and that is a file service that saves things for you and I have it automatically um, back up my phone photos into Dropbox and so I won't lose anything. If I lose my phone or if it breaks, um, I know my photos have been sent uh, have been sent into Dropbox. So if you look down here, there's the photo of my living room floor and it's already there in Dropbox so I don't have to worry about losing anything. So that's step one of my process. Step two is I have Dropbox on my computer at home as a file uh, folder in my file system and I'm on a Mac at home so because I have Android and Mac I have to do extra steps to get things to talk to each other. So with this uh, Dropbox, I can see all of my camera uploads in here and you can see these dates go back to 2020. Now on my computer, I use Photos and this is the program I used for long-term storage of my photos and for keyword tagging of my photos and we'll get to that a little bit more. So when I'm in Dropbox, I will go ahead and um, figure out what I need to move from Dropbox into my long-term storage because, because I have a free Dropbox account. I don't use this as my long-term storage. Um, so I do have to go through more steps. And hopefully as I explain everything, it will all make sense why I have so many steps in my process. Now I keep this little note in Evernote and you can keep this note anywhere. You like to keep notes even on paper if that's what works for you. And this note tells me the last time I uploaded um, photos from Dropbox to my computer as well as some other steps that we'll get to in future videos. Now this says November 5th was the last time I uploaded photos. I try to do this once a month but obviously sometimes I get behind and uh, and it doesn't happen every month. So when I'm looking at my files in Dropbox I can see that butterfly photo was the last photo I uploaded. So within this date range I know that this photo has not yet been uploaded so I start selecting files there and I drag all the way down to the bottom of my files and I drag them over to my computer. So this actually makes a copy of my files. So now I have them in short-term backup storage as well as on my computer for long-term storage. Now, once all my photos are in my long-term storage in my photo app program, and you can use whatever photo app program works for you. I use photos because it's already on my Mac. Now I can see here, I'm confirming that yes, I did indeed get everything moved over and that way I'm sure I didn't miss anything. And then, I go about adding keywords to my photos and I find this step important because it helps me find these photos in the future. If I'm thinking about, oh, that vacation we took, I know I can look in my adventures and events keyword and find those photos. So when I'm getting keywords, I go back to the date here, it's January 24th, that's when I uploaded all of these brand new photos from Dropbox, so I know that's where I need to start doing my keywords. And I just have a simple um, list of keywords and I click to add them and that's how photos works. You'll have to figure out your long-term photo storage and how it tackles keywords. And I will be sure to go through and add keywords to every photo. Now, how you go about adding keywords is really personal and up to you. I have keywords for different family members. I have keywords for different events. I have keywords for common holidays and themes. And so I've refined these keywords over the years. And this list is pretty much all the keywords that I use. And so I will finish up with my whole entire um, 
brand new dump of photos into my long-term photo storage program. And once I'm done with that, it's time to think about long-term backups. We all know that computer hard drives can crash, so I have yet another layer of backups. My Mac has Time Machine on it, which is the Mac version of the internal backup system. So I have Time Machine running, and that backs up to another drive at my house. And then I also have a long-term off-site backup, and I use a, an application called Carbonite, and that's a paid service that backs up my entire laptop to an off-site location. So if my house burns down, my computer is still backed up over there, as well as all my photos. So I find that very important to have lots of backup systems. So now that you've seen how I tackle the first step of my photos, let me give you some of the key highlights so that you make sure however you go about your photos, you get some of these key points covered. So point number one, if you're using your phone for most of your photos, make sure you have some kind of automated backup system. I use Dropbox, I use the free service, but they do have a paid service as well. I prefer Dropbox because they don't harvest my personal data like other places do but Google Photos is another option and there are other options beyond that as well. Key point number two is to have a long-term storage option for your photos. Now Dropbox could be your long-term storage option or Google Photos or whatever it is you use to automatically back up your phone. That could very well be your long-term storage option. I use my computer to edit a lot of my photos so I do move them to my computer for long-term storage, keyword tagging, and then further backup from there. And that brings us to key point number three, which is to have some organization for your photos. Now, I use keywords. I also use separate folders to store photos in. And you could do this manually, or you can use a program like I do with photos that can um, help auto-generate some keywords and auto-generate some folders for you. So however you go about it, make sure you have some way that you can easily go back and find the photos you're looking for. Perhaps they're vacation photos or photos of a certain person in your life. Make sure there's some organization in place so that you can find those photos when you're ready to work with them. And finally, make sure you have long-term backup options for your photos. Now, like I said, you may have covered this already in step one. Uh, however, I do not. And so my long-term storage of my photos also includes all of that keyword information and organization of folders and such so that when or... <laughs> I would like to say if a problem occurs, but I have had hard drive crashes and I have lost things before. So when your computer dies on you or your phone or whatever your photos are on, you have that long-term backup to go to. It's good to have it already organized with all of the work you've put into so you don't lose that work on top of everything else. So make sure your long-term storage option includes your organization and keyword tagging as well. I hope you found this video helpful. I will be back next month with part two of this series and this series will be in multiple steps. I will include, next month I will include how I prepare my photos for printing. And depending on the length of that, I might also go into how I store my photos into stories after I've printed them. So that might be just one video or it might be two. So stay tuned next month for the next part of this series. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.